Okay, frequency. As we've seen our stalker guys grow, oftentimes what they do is they'll add a pasture that's 10 miles down the road, or another one that's eight miles down the road, or four miles that way, and they end up with lots of groups of cattle in lots of places. And it's hard to get around every day to every one of those groups. And so if they're not gonna use a self feeder, uh, then they're very interested in, could I feed those cattle three days a week? And, and make, my, you know, make my rotation where I don't have to go to every place every day. So we've done some, uh, you know, over the years, there's been a lot of work with protein supplementation that shows that a, a three day a week or even two day a week, and some studies say once a week, that they got a good protein response. But that's because of the way the animals recycle nitrogen and protein in their system and that sort of thing. And so uh, we were taught, I was taught in school that you could not do that with energy supplements. You have to feed them every day. And, and so I, you know, I preached that for a long time, and then I, I, I just, people kept asking me that. So we decided we would try it. So we asked this question, can we feed these byproduct blends uh, you know, less than every day and, and have decent performance? And uh, I did this for several years. Did it, did it first year, I thought, this is just can't be true. So I did it the second year, and it looks like it's true. And that was comparing every day versus three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then finally, the last two years, we did it twice a week. And, and this is basically, we took six pounds a day, and we divided that either into seven helpings, three, or, or even two that we had this last two years. And uh, the performance on these cattle, they gained almost identical uh, across those three treatments. So hay only here, not quite as good hay this year, about, about three quarters of a pound a day. But you see, we got a pound a day response uh, from daily feeding, and we got just the same amount from, from those that were fed either three or two times a week. And I had to do this for four years before I realized, okay, I guess maybe this is, uh, this is, a, this is okay to do. And, and so we have a lot of people that have, have, uh, have taken that on. Now, I don't want to spend a lot of time, there's a lot of detail, and actually if you want, if you want all the detail, the papers are listed in your, uh, in your uh, proceedings where you can go look at these, uh, look at the the, the original reports on these, but this, these lines here are the hay intake. And so I guess it's common sense the day that you feed these calves, and again, think of this, 42 pounds a week. So that 2X treatment, we're feeding them 21 pounds of feed, uh, you know, Monday and Thursday, it just seems like it should be wrong. And, and so if we look at, look at these bottom lines, this is the hay intake the day that we feed the concentrate. They only ate about uh, four pounds of, of hay that day. But then they, they compensate, and the days they're not fed feed, they do get up there and they eat quite a bit of hay. Uh, but they never get up here to where it's, this little dotted line doesn't show up very well. That's the daily cattle. So they never eat as much hay as the daily fed cattle would eat. And as a result, we have an improved feed conversion in those that are fed less frequently. And that's been repeated over and over with this. So, so uh, some basis for folks that are setting up these you know, these circuits where they get around to each pasture every other day and maybe take a Sunday to, to not, not go see the cattle. And, uh, and, and that's working out quite well and, and, and seems, to be, uh, seems to be functional out there. So something that can help some folks that, that are having a hard time getting around doing it all. Now, the la this is the last study I'm gonna show you from this, from this set, but basically we get this question a lot. I mean, this is, this is the way most of our people put feet up. And it's just the bottom line. And, and for many years, I said, oh, that's, that won't work. You know, you don't want to do those. There's lots of reasons why. Uh, I, I, I've sort of talked about why that's probably not a good idea. But the fact that most people continue to do that makes me, always makes me wonder, okay, maybe it's me. You know, maybe I'm the one that, that is, is biased and is not doing the right thing. So we did some work, again, with our stockpile fescue systems that we just finished, and, and we looked at two strategies. One would be to either just give the calves more grass, give them a better allowance of grass uh, to try to improve their performance, and the other was to, you know, what about protein tubs? How, how big of a value does that have? Now, I'm gonna just show you all this as one, one table, but, and so average daily gain is here across the top. Again, this was 56 days on stockpile fescue from November, mid-November to mid-January. Uh, we've got about six tenths. This, this uh, was a three year period, so we've had some tough uh, years the last couple. Uh, we only got six tenths on the unsupplemented cattle, where we gave them a little extra forage allowance. This is we're let, letting them waste a little bit more as we move fences and strip graze these cattle. We got up to around a pound a day 
uh, with, uh, with the normal forage and a protein tub. So benefit there for the protein tub, the extra grass approach with the mineral. We also got up there around pound day, so we probably were restricting those calves a little bit by letting them, uh, letting them uh, you know, make them clean up. And then with the extra forage and a protein tub, we, we got a further increase. Now, so that's, that's beneficial. And really, this was mostly looked at as a heifer development project. And again, lots of folks are, you know, wintering cattle in these stockpiled fescue that they're going to keep them grazing this following year. And so, uh, so you know, a little bit of a, of a bump here is probably a good idea in, even in those systems. Now, not, not, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. We're short, but uh, these cattle only ate about three quarters of a pound of that, uh, of that tub. And that surprised me. I expected that to be a little bit higher. It's just a port, it's a port tub, a Southern States port tub. It's a, their maxi cattle tub. It's a good quality tub, but, but I, I didn't expect them to eat more than three quarters of a pound of that. Uh, if we look down here and, and, and look at our forage, the data we did uh, have a forage use efficiency about 75 and those cattle that were, were getting cleaned up pretty well and a little bit lower than that of 65% down here in the, in the extra grass. So we did accomplish that, uh, that goal of giving them extra grass, letting them waste more. The bottom line to this, though, is that uh, the, the extra grass has a cost, and that's you have less grazing days per acre. And so, again, as, as producers kind of think about their strategy, what they're trying to do, and how much grass they've got, uh, they can use this data. Now, for stocker cattle people, I'd say, unless you're sort of slow winter in cattle, you know, this is, this is probably not, uh, you know, this, again, the problem with tubs is you get three quarters of a pound of feed, and it's not enough to do much of anything. Uh, give you a little bit of benefit here, but, but probably not, uh, not, uh, not compared to feeding. 